Hello again and welcome to another Show Me. In this one we're going to be talking about the parasympathetics in relation to the head and neck. And what we need to clear up really is this issue surrounding the cranial nerves that have a parasympathetic function and the relationship of those cranial nerves with a parasympathetic function to the trigeminal nerve which doesn't have a parasympathetic function but is kind of related to the parasympathetic flow in the head anatomically and I'll try and explain what I mean. We're going to start off by talking about this structure here, the trigeminal ganglion, which I'm representing as this box and we're going to draw off the major divisions here, so V1, V2, V3, uh, of course V1 is ophthalmic, V2 is maxillary, V3 is mandibular and V1 would travel through the superior orbital foramen, V2 through foramen rotundum and V3 through foramen ovale. Now as I said, trigeminal nerve is sensory and motor. Its small motor branch travels only with V3 and that is the largest of the three divisions. So no parasympathetic outflow comes from nuclei in the brainstem associated with the trigeminal nerve. They do not originate from that trigeminal nuclear complex inside the brainstem. But hanging off of the division somewhere, we do have these autonomic ganglia. And I'm drawing them here, just pinching off each of the major divisions. And they act as a relay so that preganglionic parasympathetic fibers can leave nuclei of cranial nerves that do have a parasympathetic function, synapse in these ganglia, and then send postganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the structures that they need to innovate. So we can label these and say the one that's associated with ophthalmic, which is V1, is called the ciliary, ciliary ganglion. There's one associated with maxillary, which is V2, and that's called the pterygo palatine ganglion. And there's two associated with V3. One is called the otic ganglion, and the other is called the submandibular ganglion. So we've got these four ganglia all anatomically attached to divisions of the trigeminal nerve, and now we've got our four, uh, our four cranial nerves with a parasympathetic function, and these are cranial nerves three, which is oculomotor, seven, which is facial, nine, which is glossopharyngeal, and 10, which is vagus. So these are the cranial nerves with parasympathetic function. And we can then start to pair these cranial nerves up to specific ganglia associated with the trigeminal nerve. So first of all, we can say that it's cranial nerve three, which is the oculomotor, that is associated with the ciliary ganglion, and that of course is associated with the parasympathetics to the constrictor pupillae muscle of the iris. Seven wants to reach the pterygopalatine ganglion held onto by the maxillary division, and the facial nerve here wants to access the lacrimal gland, and it also wants to access the palate and the nose. Cranial nerve number nine, which is the glossopharyngeal nerve, wants to access the otic ganglion to eventually send parasympathetic fibers to the parotid gland. And we come back to the facial again, which is number seven. This wants to gain access to the submandibular ganglion in order to send secretory motor fibers that will reach the submandibular glands and also the sublingual gland. So here you can see how the trigeminal nerve is anatomically holding on to these ganglia for preganglionic fibers to synapse and that these preganglionic pre fibers are sent by either cranial nerves 3, 7, 9 or 10. Now you may notice that cranial nerve number 10, which is the vagus nerve which you all know about, doesn't access any of these ganglia, it doesn't access the ciliary ganglion or the pterygopalatine ganglion or the otic ganglion 
or the submandibular ganglion and that's because you may remember that it travels into the neck eventually it will access ganglia that are associated with viscera in the thorax and the abdomen so hopefully that is a nice little conceptual kind of primer for understanding the anatomical arrangement of parasympathetic distribution in the head and face. Okay, see you next time. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.